chairman and the committee for this very important epochal moment in our history. Clearly, because the world is dynamic and is not static or stationary, like everything else, foreign policy must be reviewed. Because things change, attitudes change, and we must change according to time. We have gathered courtesy of the House Committee on Foreign Affairs to conduct a comprehensive review of our nation's foreign policy so that we are better prepared to face the many evolving challenges of our present age. Our nation's foreign policy defines the terms on which we engage with the rest of the world. It is through our foreign policy that we declare who we are, what we stand for, and the principles we hold dear and will defend as we have done since independence in South Africa, in Sierra Leone, in Liberia, and everywhere else we have been called upon. The world has changed in many ways that not long ago will have unfathomable, or rather, I'm sorry, the world has changed in ways that not long will have unfathomable ramifications. Technology has changed the way we conduct business, and it has created opportunities for millions across the world. It also has made us vulnerable because the technology platforms and tools that have become such important parts of our lives are themselves susceptible to the people who will seek to use them to hurt us. Climate change has become a dominant public policy challenge. The ease with which capital travels across the world has created opportunities to, for commerce, but also made it easier to finance crime and terrorism. Terrorists, criminals, and bad actors of all shades now have access to tools that allow them to operate across borders with ease while avoiding detection by law enforcement. No country in the world can meet these challenges alone. We need a global response which means we need each other. We have seen from the coordinated efforts to combat COVID-19 how international partnerships can work to overcome intractable challenges. The objective now must be to replicate this working formula across the many sectors where such collaboration is necessary to find and implement solutions that will improve the lives and circumstances of people all over the world. It has been said often that the world is now one global village. And what affects one in even the most, in, in the remotest part of the world has the potential of affecting another and in fact of affecting all. Our nation's foreign policy should define the terms on which we engage the rest of the world to address the different manifestations of our shared challenges so that we can each and, and together survive through this new age of promise and peril. To do this, we must establish the values that underpin and motivate our foreign policy, as this is necessary to, to determine anything else, everything else, including how we protect our country from the downside of globalization while ensuring our people benefit from the opportunities that abound. As listening to the Honorable Minister when he gave his anecdote of what happened in the United States with uh, the former president. And we were taking further back uh, years by the Chairman of Foreign Affairs in the Senate when he pointed out almost the same thing happened during the Babangida regime. We simply put, for me, this is a, it's part of foreign policy. It's called protectionism. These are protectionist policies. And for some people, 
like Donald Trump, you can also say it was both protectionist and it was expansionist. So whilst he was not allowing the Nigerian agricultural equipment and goods to come into the country, to his country, it was more or less mandating that the U.S. be allowed to bring theirs into Nigeria. So whilst he was in one hand protecting his economy and his people, he was expanding his reach economically to other parts of the world. So sometimes inherent in foreign policy is our contradictions. So I'm sure even if we look deeply into our foreign policy, we might have contradictions. Contradictions that may work for us and contradictions that may not work for us. And that is why this review is very important. It tells you also that foreign policy is hydra-headed. Hydra-headed in the sense that it can shape economic issues, social issues, and political issues. So it has ramifications economically, socially, and politically. So that's why it must be taken, it must be ve taken very seriously, particularly this review. I don't know when last we reviewed our foreign policy, but not in the, uh, uh, not that I remember, probably in the 60s or something. And if we say the world is dynamic, and we now live in one global village, then clearly, it is time for us to review our foreign policy. Today in Nigeria, we face two existential threats of insecurity and unemployment that have caused a deep loss of faith amongst our people. All our governing efforts must be geared towards finding solutions to these problems. Whereas the rest of the government looks inwards for solutions, it is the sole mandate of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs to look outwards. It is not an easy task, but I assure you that the House of Representatives stands ready to be an effective partner in advancing our nation's foreign policy objectives. In doing this, we have employed what we call parliamentary diplomacy. For me, this is a key and veritable tool that is used and designed, used, used in foreign policy uh, discussions. We call it back-channel diplomacy. It is accepted and used globally, been used in the UK, in the US, and several other countries. The House of Representatives has deployed this over the years in South Africa. We've deployed it in Ghana with considerable results. We deployed it even many years ago during the debt relief. Many people do not, are not aware that the House of Representatives, the National Assembly as a whole, a few years ago, played an integral part in, the, in um, achieving debt relief for Nigeria. So parliamentary diplomacy keys in to the outside world, to issues that affect Nigeria, either directly or indirectly. Many of you will be aware that we now have an association called COSAP. That is a conference of speakers of African parliaments, which I chair. This group does nothing other than shaping policy for African countries. The task we are working on right now is the issue of debt relief. And we'll take on other issues that af affect us as a body where we can find common ground. So this is important, but apart from actually setting the parameters, legislators are actually very, and parliamentarians are actually very key in shaping foreign policy uh, uh, decisions and to work together, together with the executive. So when we do this parliamentary diplomacy, we're not working in contradiction. Uh, we're working together with the executive uh, to assist, to assist them in what you can call their own core responsibility. 
Well, it's a symbiotic relationship that we must explore. All hands must be on deck to achieve maximum results. I can say that a country's foreign policy consists of self-interest strategies, self-interest strategies chosen by the state to safeguard its national interests and to achieve its own goals through relations with other countries at the bilateral level or through relations with other countries at the multilateral level. Discussions on foreign policy often reminds me of the play Le Bourgeois Gentilhomme by the French playwright Moliere, in which a nouveau riche aristocrat is surprised and delighted to learn from his private teacher that all his life he has speaking prose, he has been speaking in prose without even knowing it. So without formally articulating it, Nigeria's foreign policy has been evolving in line with our strategic national interests. Foreign policy is therefore dynamic and responsive to changing priorities and interests. A good example of the dynamism and responsiveness of foreign policy is the dramatic recalibration of the US foreign policy within a period of one month. Under President Muhammadu Buhari, the Buhari doctrine is anchored on the pillars of good neighborliness, peaceful coexistence with all countries, African regional cooperation, and multilateralism. President Muhammadu Buhari himself unequivocally stated as follows, in our efforts to achieve a realistic domestic and foreign policy, as well as national development, we have identified the following nine priority areas to guide our policy directions over the next few years. One, a thriving and sustainable economy. Two, enhancing social inclusion and poverty reduction. Three, increased agricultural output for food security and export. And it's interesting, in this context of uh, agricultural output for food security and export, I remember when, uh, a few years back, uh, President Mohammed Buhari was uh, invited to the White House by the then President, Donald Trump. At the working lunch hosted by then President uh, Trump, uh, the Secretary of Commerce of the United mm -hmm. States um, was asked, Mr. President Trump was asking uh, his cabinet uh, uh, members, um, you know, what the relationship with Nigeria was. And the Secretary to the Commerce said that uh, Nigeria was putting up barriers to U.S. agricultural products accessing the Nigerian market. The then President Trump rather uh, belligerently uh, insisted that Nigeria must remove such barriers immediately and that the US had the best agricultural products in the world and that we should patronize uh, the US agricultural products. But interestingly enough, on, uh, on another trip to the US, uh, when Mr. Uh, President uh, met with Nigerians in the diaspora, he was uh, informed by a Nigerian-born U.S. customs official, senior customs official, how Nigerian agricultural products were prevented from accessing the U.S. market. And the reasons uh, uh, the lady uh, said was for phytosanitary reasons, uh, essentially, was a barrier to market access. This is um, quality control grounds on agricultural products. So this shows how you know, different uh, aspects of or different sectors can play an important role uh, in uh, foreign policy 
uh, 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 development. Ms. President also went on to, uh, in identifying the nine priority areas, number four was energy sufficiency in power and petroleum products, expanding transport and other infrastructural development, number five, number six, business growth, trade and industrialization, seven, education, affordable health care, and of course, with regards to health care, we are seeing uh, today um, vaccine nationalism in the context of uh, COVID response. Number eight, good governance and anti-corruption. Number nine, uh, security. And also, I suppose, with a huge diaspora, clearly a coherent strategy and policy need to be elaborated to leverage on that potential treasure trove for national development. Mr. President also, in um, 2019, mandated the Ministry of Foreign Affairs to review and update the nation's foreign policy in the framework of the government's nine priority uh, areas. And it's a happy coincidence, I must say, that the House Committee on Foreign Affairs also had the same idea. So we congratulate the Speaker uh, of the House, the Chair of the Committee, and his members on this excellent and timely initiative and express our gratitude for the exemplary cooperation and partnership extended to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in the organization of this uh, uh, conference. And we look forward to having a very rich output that we can use to reboot and redynamize Nigeria's foreign policy, which in reality over the years has secured Nigeria a place among the League of major global players. So I wish you uh, happy and fruitful uh, deliberations and look forward for the output from this conference. Thank you very much. By your tacit support, we cannot but succeed. What then is the justification for the task of reviewing our foreign policy that we have set ahead of us? What gains are inherent in this exercise and finally, are we capable to deliver on the vision and goal that we have set for ourselves in this exercise? I shall attempt to oblige a simple answer to all the questions by simply saying that as a lawmaker and scholar in international relations and diplomacy, I know that Nigeria is non-aligned. We practice and support democracy, yes, Africa is, was the centerpiece of our foreign policy, okay? Concentric circles and citizens diplomacy. Those are all you keep reading and seeing everywhere. Having been inundated with questions everywhere on what really constitutes the foreign policy of our dear country, the nation state called Nigeria, it is my considered opinion and I can say ditto for some of you here with whom I have been privileged to share thoughts on issues that are germane to the conversation at hand. That it's about time we had a fully and comprehensively articulated piece of document that addresses what we can call the foreign policy of Nigeria. Though foreign policy in its true nature is dynamic, such a piece must encompass and as well as engender ideals that will make Nigeria maximize the gains of its relationship with every part of the outside world, be it Asia, Africa, Europe, or the Americans. And so, Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, in the next three days or so, alongside the 54 gentlemen and women chosen from a long list of career diplomats, scholars in various fields of learning, and quality and experience individuals of diverse competences who will be here to jow jow over various presentations to fashion a way forward for our country to assume its pride of place within the global diplomatic circles of the 21st century. Because time is fleeting and circumstances change with changing times, 
what was in vogue 20 or 40 years ago must naturally give way to new orders and new ways of doing things. And the reality of the foregoing has become on us for action with regards to our foreign policy. I'm also glad to quickly add that we are living in peculiar times that may not have been envisaged by those who crafted whatever bits we have today in relation to our foreign policy. We have got the men and women here to drive all the discussions in the right direction. And thanks to the magnanimity of our partners, the NIA, we have also found an environment that is conducive to the exercise at hand. In conclusion, let me thank His Excellency, our dear President and Leader, President Muhammadu Buhari, GCFR, for every support he has in many ways continued to offer to us at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and by extension the Committee of the House to succeed in all we do. I thank our dear speaker and leader for his constant visionary guide and inspiration. Also, I find each day fulfilling because of the support and loyalty to a common cause by members of the House Foreign Affairs Committee. The, minister, the ministers of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, I also thank you for your cooperation to serve. The Permanent Secretary and indeed members of the management staff of the ministry, I salute your friendship. No matter what we do together, the central idea is for Nigeria to move forward. The DG NIA, a wonderful and patriotic gentleman, who in the current course has demonstrated how much of an ingenious administrator and leader he is, please accept my respect and friendship.